Welcome back. We had a huge day yesterday. Um, it kind of didn't feel like it, but there were some big things in the background going on that were just huge. I, I was actually looking at through things last night in bed and I came across a few things and I was looking at my phone going, is that real? Or is that a, is that a typo? Like just huge numbers. So uh, we're going to get into that. You know, we did yesterday, we hit a new all time high. Uh, we hit about a little over 77,000 on Bitcoin just uh, for a bit yesterday. Um, right now we're trading down uh, about 76, 76.2. Um, but we are hanging in there and we're, we're continually kind of stair stepping up a bit even even during these uh last few days so uh but the but the things in the background going on guys are absolutely massive so i want to share that with you guys um first thing we had yesterday uh and i know i, I wanted to get on and do a live stream of the fomc uh press conference with Jer jerome pal um i wasn't able to I actually had a guy that had that was coming over to buy some um, extra building supplies that I built my house with, so I couldn't get on and and be doing a live stream during that time. But I did watch most of of Jerome Powell's speech, and there were some interesting things. So let's get into it, guys. Uh, first thing I want to jump over and um, just look. Uh, here's here's what happened with the Fed as far as rate rates go again. Uh, as expected, we did have another 25 uh, point decrease, a 25 point cut um, in rates yesterday. So that was good. There was, you know, watching and just kind of reading Powell's, uh, you know, into Powell's statements. There was one thing that was kind of um in my opinion a little uneasy uh he was asked about you know future rate cuts or um his verbiage that he was using and if it indicated that they were possibly thinking about pausing rates here in the short term and um pal didn't exactly say outright no he didn't he didn't say just flat out no he said um oh what did he he said no not really so that was a little um a little soft you know as far as his his thoughts or his verbiage on go going forward <clears throat> but that was really about the only thing um the only other thing guys he he did um he did have one point where he was asked now this is the funny drama part po political part of of his speech yesterday he actually was asked if he um would if he thought he, his job was in jeopardy basically because trump has has uh voiced his disapproval of jerome powell's job uh or the, you know his performance and uh, you know, the reporter basically said, you know, are you worried about um, Trump coming in and replacing you? And to that, Jerome just kind of said, <laughs> you have no power here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and then he ripped off the, the, the uh, microphone off the podium and just dropped it, you know. Now he <laughs> it wasn't that dramatic, but you know he did put on his uh his thuggish Jerome Powell face and and all he said was not permitted under law. So um guys, just the drama in finance is just hilarious. Every every once in a while we get those little things and uh it just makes you laugh. So anyways, um you know pal basically kind of saying that i you know he was there you know and 
Trump doesn't have the power to uh, remove him. Um, but we did get the, the that 25 point cut, uh, which will increase global liquidity, um, especially with central banks looking to the Fed and what they're doing for their moves, which is usually kind of, uh, you know, they'll probably never admit that that's the thing, but really, you know, the Federal Reserve kind of sets the pace for the rest of the world. So uh, global liquidity, um, money supply is all increasing, which is tremendous for Bitcoin. Um, not so good for, for inflation, guys. So if, if you're... If you're sitting on the fence, if you're if you're doing what your parents taught you to do and save money, put money in the bank and save it, uh, not going to work out well for you. You know, the government is turning on the, the money printers, guys. Get out of the dollar. Get into some kind of of asset, you know, you know, buy a house, buy, you know, ho housing kind of has been struggling, but. Guys, we are we are entering into those rate cuts that uh, money supply uh, part of the four year economic cycle and inflation isn't gonna isn't gonna do you any favors. Even at best case, you're you're still getting two percent of your wealth stolen away from you by the government. Uh, best case with that two percent goal that they have. So, you know, get into something. Uh, traditionally, you know, stocks even don't even outperform inflation. Honestly, you know, you, you've got, especially since 2008, where we've not only seen inflation, but we've actually seen monetary uh, debasement by the government. Um, so really your fastest horse is, is Bitcoin guys. Um, there are a few other things that that can help if you get lucky and you pick a good stock like Nvidia. Obviously, you're you're doing well, but Bitcoin always outpaces literally just about everything else out there. So, uh, you know, you can get lucky with with meme coins and and altcoins and things if you know what you're doing. Uh, but Bitcoin, guys, is is kind of it. So. Uh, yeah, just, just know that if you're saving money in the bank, you're, you're literally, you've got your money in somebody else's hands and the government is literally clipping your coins. So, um, anyways, guys, that was my little rant there. Let's, uh, get back into it. Um, before we go, uh, get back into what was really surprising yesterday to me, the numbers that were really surprising. Guys, I want to jump over to um, Rory Pond Rescue Ranch, guys. These these guys are the sanctuary that I'm kind of uh, helping support this month. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, just go over to their page. I've got their links in the description. You can go over to their page, go over to more shop to support our animals. And on this page, guys, you can just scroll down. They've got an Amazon. Uh, wish list that you can buy something off Amazon and send it to them um, to help their sanctuary out. You can buy merch through Bonfire or Printify, uh, or you can just donate a few dollars through PayPal or Venmo here. So guys, go help out these animals. These these are uh, animals that have been, been abused or neglected, abandoned. Um, so some good work that these guys are doing. Uh, just go over and help them out with with any little amount you can. Buy yourself some good karma. <clears throat> okay, so let's get into the big thing, uh, guys. And this was I'm gonna actually zoom in on this for you guys. This was uh, concerning the Bitcoin ETFs. Um, oh boy, let's see. If I can, if I can actually zoom that for you. Ah, what am I doing? Okay, so 
Uh, yesterday we had uh, an enormous, enormous inflow of capital into the ETFs. And notably, this number right here, this first column, guys, as I've been saying, this is IBIT. This is BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF, this whole column. And yesterday they took in a record amount. This was the biggest inflow that BlackRock has ever seen since they launched their ETFs back in uh, January. Um, they took in one billion, $119 million yesterday, guys. Absolutely enormous. Now, what's interesting is yesterday, uh, the day after the, the election, I was talking in, in my previous video that this, this day of the election, uh, before the, the, the election results started coming in, BlackRock buyers sold a record amount of, of the ETF. This was the highest amount. This 44 million was the highest outflow that BlackRock had ever seen. Right before the election, we jumped up and those guys got left behind because we have not seen those prices again since then. Uh, then they came in, came back the day after the election and sold even harder. This was the second record day of outflows for uh, BlackRock in a row. They sold $69 million, uh, not yesterday, but the day before. And then yesterday they, they, uh, they learned their lesson, uh, figured out, well, we sold at the wrong time. We got left behind and FOMO hit, you know, they, they, they decided, oh, we can't crash the price. There's too much demand. And they FOMO'd back in a record billion plus guys, huge. Now. We didn't really feel that in the price um, because as, as, as we all know, they buy over the counter. Uh, so they're not buying straight from the exchanges, which doesn't immediately push up those prices like it, it would if they were buying on the spot. Uh, but we can expect that to, uh, you know, we've seen the, over-the-counter desks, the, those numbers that I showed you guys in a previous video are just declining and we're at, at, at multi-year lows. Um, so the OTC desks are dry, drying up. Demand is massively increasing. Um, another thing to think about, guys, yesterday, I did the, the, I ran the numbers and BlackRock alone yesterday bought 35, almost pushing 40 times what was mined yesterday. BlackRock, just BlackRock alone bought close to 40 times what was mined. So there's not enough Bitcoin, guys. There's not enough to go around. If you're selling, uh, the people who are selling, you know, even over the counter, the people who are selling over the counter are going to be uh, pretty bummed when they look back at it. And I think most of them know that that's why we see that decline in the over the counter, um, and mining supply that's being sold over the counter. People know it's that time of the cycle. People know it's that time of the economic cycle. People see the, uh, money printers turning on global liquidity coming in. Not many people are wanting to sell, guys. So we are destined to, uh, you know, honestly, in my opinion, go parabolic like we always do. Uh, it's just the beginning of that banana zone, as Raul Pal would uh, say. Um, so let's go over to the charts really, sh really quick. I want to show you guys one more quick thing before... Um, before I let you guys go, I'm gonna get rid of this ETF. So this is the daily chart. And guys, I've I've kind of shown you guys this, this line uh going back to August sometime that we have, and that's that's kind of one of the only resistances that I saw. But 
two days ago, we broke through that. We came back down, but we did close above that line. And, and since you can see we're, we're moving right along with that line. So, um, you know, we, we, it seems that we're turning that into support. Um, the next move would, you know, either be, you know, kind of bounce along this line, which would, uh, give us an end, end of year price. Oh, I did not mean to move that. Okay, so that would give us a, a end, of, end of year price clear up here at about $89,000, uh, which is a, a point of re uh, resistance that I've been saying for probably 10 months, guys. I've been saying that we're going to see some kind of resistance at $89,000. Um, so that would put us right at that, that level by the end of the year if we just bounced along this line. Uh, but honestly, guys, I expect that we're going to test this as, as support for a minute, and then we're going to bounce off it at some point. So um, now we could, we could do the opposite. We could fall through and, and have some troubles bouncing back through. But by the end of the year, I, I really do believe that we're going to be bouncing off this line sometimes. So... Uh, you know, in the next couple months, I do expect us to, to be above and well above this line. So, um, anyways, guys, if you like the video, please, uh, like, and subscribe. Um, I will be back, you know, in the next few days, uh, with another video. I'm sure it's, we're getting to that exciting point in the cycle so i i do like doing these videos when there's actually some good news some excitement to be talking about for the last eight or ten months or so we've we've really been just going sideways and slightly down and it's it hasn't you know that part of the cycle is you know almost worse than the uh the bear cycle because you know when or the bear uh part of the cycle where you're just go crashing down at that point you can just you know at least i just kind of resolve myself to uh this is part of that uh, cycle but during that sideways point it's just so excruciating uh excruciatingly boring that you know nobody really wanted to be doing videos there wasn't much to talk about you know and there, there really just wasn't that excitement. So we're getting back into that, guys. So uh, I will see you guys in that next video. Bye.